to Totalus Rankium. This week, Tiberius. Hello, welcome to uh, Totalus Rankium, episode three. Episode three. Still here. Yes, um, I counted up. Yeah. 84 emperors. Wow. That's, that's, ex- that's how long we're going to go for. That's 84 weeks, probably more or less. Yeah. This week is Tiberius. Do you Tiberius. know anything about Tiberius? No, the only thing I know, and my goal is to put some sort of Star Trek reference into every single episode, Good. is that it's uh, James T. Kirk's middle name, what the T stands for, James Tiberius Kirk. Is it? Yes. There you go, I'm learning now. Yeah, there you go. Um. Right, okay. So, Tiberius. Let's begin. He's considered by many to be a tyrant. A tyrant. So that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. I'm not getting good vibes. I did some scientific research. I typed in top ten worst emperors into Google. Oh, brilliant. And then I looked at the first five lists. Yeah. And Tiberius was on every single one of those lists. Wow. So he's generally considered a bad egg. He was. This is how scientific I got. He was sixth on the first list, eighth on the second list, seventh on the third list, eighth again on the fourth list, and then fifth. Got up to fifth. Oh my goodness. On the fifth list. Okay. So, oh, actually, I'm, I'm really intrigued now what he did that was so bad, so tyrannical. Yeah, so it, it's not looking good for him. No. For successors, Ultimus, but maybe a probium crazy. Yes, I was maybe thinking. Maybe he get some points there. Um, no eyes. Um, he claimed to be the saviour of the Republic. Tiberius. No, he didn't. I forgot to delete that from my notes last week. Yeah, he wasn't the first emperor either. Oh, oh, slapdash. Was, oh, his name wasn't Augustus either. No, no, it wasn't. So his name was Tiberius Claudius Nero. Oh, I've heard of Nero. Is it the Nero? No, no, it's not. But it's a link to the Nero, and we'll be doing him rather shortly. Because I've heard Nero's not very nice either. Oh, we'll get on to that. We will. Is it something in the name? Maybe it is. So Claudius, so he was a Claudi- yeah. from the Claudii family. Right. Um, it's a very highborn family. Very well respected in the patrician class. That so it'd be like, um, yeah, Augustus, similar sort of upbringing to him, perhaps? Yes, the Julii family were yeah. patricians as well, yes. So he's um, very high up, well respected. So his father hmm. was also Tiberius Claudius Nero. They weren't very imaginative <sighs> with names of the Romans. Ha- like, okay, imagine that. Sun- Sunday lunch, as I'm sure they all had a Sunday roast. So, Tiberius! Yes! Yes! It gets worse. Oh no. The girls Tiberius. didn't have different names in Roman times. What? Where? So, um, let's take uh, Agrippa's daughters. Yeah. His daughters were called Agrippina. Oh, that's all. That's like um, Nigel Lawson's daughter, who's called Nigella Lawson. Oh, yeah. Does he have more than one called that, though? Oh, I, d- I hope not. All of the daughters, all of the daughters in the Julia family were called Julia. Yes, because, uh, uh, let me go back. Yeah, Yes, okay. Notes. Yep, so yeah, Agrippa married Julia, who's then exiled. Yeah. And they have three kids. Yes. Yeah, so the, the women, they don't even get any distinction at all. They're just called one name. So historians oh, wow. have gone back and tried to give different names to people. But, I mean, it's also true with the names for the men. So we've got Daddy Tiberius Claudius <laughs> Nero. That's cool. uh, what should we call him? Uh, Papa, Papa well, Nero? He, to be honest... Well, yeah, we'll call him Papa Nero, but he doesn't last long. Oh, okay. No we'll call him Papa Nero for now. So Papa <laughs> Nero marries Livia. Do you remember Livia from last week? Uh, yes, she married Octavius. Yes, eventually. Yes, because, uh, yeah, Augustus was stepdad, right? Yeah, so I'll quickly go over this again then. So, yeah, so right. Papa Nero yeah. and Livia are mm. married. Papa Nero is quite old. Yeah. Livia's still quite young. Ooh. Um, they have a child called Tiberius, the one we're covering yeah, this week. That, that, yeah, yeah. So Tiberius was born in 42 BC. Then Octavian, mm. who became Augustus, yeah. saw Livia, went, ooh, I like a bit of that, and convinced Papa Nero to divorce Livia. That, wow, that's pretty ballsy, isn't it? It must have been an awkward conversation. So it's like that um, um, indecent proposal. Like yes. Saying, yes. If I give you money. Yeah. So Rob, Robert Redford Octavia. So. I, I think it was less of if I give you money, more I'm doing this. Yeah. You can't stop me. Although oh. that is 
there are indications that it was actually quite happy. He probably did get something because mm. guess who gave Livia away? Her father was dead, so who gave her away at the wedding? <laughs> Papa, Papa yeah, Tiberius. Papa, Papa Nero, Tiberius. sorry. Yeah, Papa Nero gave Livia away. That's Livia, weird. yeah, it's a bit weird. Imagine the wedding breakfast. It must have been awkward, especially Top considering table. she was heavily pregnant with Papa Nero's second oh. child. Oh, man. Yeah, which if you remember last week, Tiberius had a brother. You drew it on the family map. It was Drusus. Yes. Yeah. He died? He did die in the end, Aww. and we'll get to that. So we've got Tiberius and his brother Drusus. They are then shipped off to live with Papa Nero, and Octavian lives with Livia. Octavian's yeah. loving life. He's got his new young bride. Papa Nero's got his sons. He's happy. Probably got some cash or something off Octavian. Yeah. Um, but then Papa Nero dies. Quite unexpectedly. So um, Octavian then takes the two boys in. Oh. Probably a little bit annoyed. <laughs> Honeymoon period's gone. He's yeah. now got two kids that aren't his. But it seems that they got on quite well. Huh. Um, because um, when Tiberius was 12, mm. that was when the Battle of Actium happened. If you remember last week, that's when Octavian fought Antony. Yeah, well... Well, sorry, I apologise. Agrippa thought for yeah, yeah, because he's you know bad leg and stuff and, and the sea sickness. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So that was the big ship battle. Yes. When they got back to Rome, Tiberius <laughs> was in Octavian's triumph. Oh. Now, a Roman triumph is when you parade through the streets and you all celebrate and it's like the film kind of you see in films. Like, yeah, everyone's cheering. There's confetti yeah. drifting down from the sky, oh, impossibly nice. high up. Yeah. You don't know where it's coming from. And you get different shots of different cities, perhaps. Yeah, everyone's cheering. Yeah, the so that, that was happening. And 12-year-old Tiberius was in the carriage. He was loving life, Aww. celebrating. So it seems quite quite a happy time. It's nice. I'm guessing as well, his egos are going to start building up a little bit if he's getting all these kind of... Well, interesting you should say that. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so he then grows up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and the next that. time we really hear about him is when he starts a military life. So Tiberius is then sent east to Armenia. He's Ooh. sent with Agrippa. So he's working under Agrippa because obviously if you need to go and sort out the, the Parthians, <laughs> who are you going to send? Uh, You're going to send Agrippa. He was a fighting legend. He was. Um, Crassus, someone I mentioned a couple of episodes ago, yeah. and Mark Antony have yep. both in recent years gone over to fight, lost horribly, and lost the Roman standard over there. That's like a flag, isn't it? It's a bit like flag. It's a big oh, pole that they they'd, really misplace things. They they'd hold it in front of their army yeah. and go, This is the standard. It wasn't just to navigate battles, although I imagine that's how they started. Yeah. We're over there. <laughs> yeah, it must have been confusing. It's like, well which direction do I go? That direction. Um it became to symbolise everything in the mm. army if you lost the standard you lost all your honor the soldiers Ooh, would rather yeah. run themselves through with swords than wow. lose their standards there's stories all over the place of soldiers killing themselves just to try and save this bit of metal do, pole. Do, do you think that's where like the the capture the flag star game comes from it's like oh, oh, the flag maybe it back. is maybe it is do you think I'm extreme. a dream story oh yeah extreme capture the flag. running through i'm just playing golden <laughs> 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 so they they lost their their standards. This was a devastating blow to the yeah, Romans. Right Mark now. Antony and Crassus, a few years apart, managed to lose some standards. So Augustus, thinking, we're not, we can't have this. No, need a new flag. Send Agrippa over. Send Tiberius over to get some experience. So off they go, and obviously Agrippa gets the standards back. Although not through pitch battle, they end up going to Armenia and they negotiate. Which shows that Agrippa was good at the negotiation as well. I like the idea that just goes to like a second hand shop and you see it on like a top shelf sort of thing. Oh, let's get it. <laughs> Stand there bartering for yeah. 10 minutes. Go, go over with their whole army and one of them <laughs> just goes, Agrippa, isn't that it? Oh my, yeah, how much? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> then on the way back, Tiberius had a little holiday oh. on the island of Rhodes. Rhodes. That's, yeah, Greece, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Place. He really liked it there. It was really nice. I'm just going to mention that. Keep it in your head. So I'm writing Tiberius and Rhodes. Yeah, he had a nice holiday. A nice holiday. Right. When <laughs> he got back... Yeah, that will make sense later on. Okay. There is a reason why I've told you about his holiday. Okay. So when he got <laughs> back, he then marries Vipsania Agrippina. 
that's going to be Agrippa's daughter, I'm guessing. It's Agrippa's name. daughter with his first wife, not with Julia, Augustus's daughter. Now, again, this is starting to get a bit confusing. So, let's go back to that family tree that you drew. Right. And let's add something onto it. Okay. I'll use a different coloured pen. Yeah. And again, we'll put this up on the website. So, you've got a gripper there. Yes. Oh, he's, yeah, because he had two girls we didn't put on, didn't he? Yes. He had yes. two girls that he didn't put on. You're saving it. Now we're going to put the girls in. Right. We're going to put in Agrippina and Agrippina. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so... First one, Agrippina. We're going to call Agrippina 1 Vipsania, because that was also announced, the name we now use to separate her. Yeah. And that was daughter from the first marriage. And then we've got Agrippina 2, which was daughter with Julia. Ag okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, when he gets back to Italy, like I say, he marries Vipsania, who is... Agrippa's daughter, ah. and they fall madly in love. Aww. Yeah, he's, he actually works really well. That's nice. Isn't that nice? You're going to crush it, aren't you, in a second? No. Ah. Oh. Not for a little while. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> for a while, it's all okay. So, he then, and you'll like this bit, Ooh, good. he then goes off with his brother Drusus, right. and then takes over the Alps. <laughs> Which, well, you would, wouldn't you? Which, which you seemed quite unimpressed by last week. Yeah, we, how are you going to get... Why? Why would you take an army... Up the, there's no, you can't farm, very few resources, no trees. Well, in the bottom, I guess. But like I said last week, it joins the dots up in the Empire. Yeah, just... And this was a troublesome spot God. that had been around for years. And um, Caesar, although been through there, hadn't managed to fully calm it down. And But Drusus and Tiberius go off. They take over the Alps. He also, at this time he found the source of the Danube. Oh the river. Yeah. It's in Germany. It's one of those the sentences Danube. I came across and went, really? He was the first person ever to find the source of the Danube. I'm sure those tribes that live there would have something to say about yeah. that. He takes <laughs> over the Alps. Um and then he goes back home and him and Agrippina have a son. Oh see happy ever after story's still going well, isn't it? Uh Yes. They call the son because this is the Romans and they very unimaginative. Go yeah. on, have a guess. Was it Tiberius Claudius Nero? No, it wasn't Tiberius. Oh. It was Drusus. Ah, after his brother. After his brother. That's quite nice. We're going to call him Drusus the son. Very unimaginative. That's all right. Drusus the son. I think I like Drusus the son. That we we'll remember. Who yeah. Was that. So Drusus the son is born. Everything's happy. Oh. Right, and that's when Tiberius should have killed himself. Oh, okay. <laughs> Does everything go a bit downhill from here? Well, I mean, the fact he comes emperor is quite good, I suppose, but it's not it bad, stops yeah. being quite so happy. So in 12 BCE, yeah. Agrippa dies. Yeah, oh yeah, that, um, that must have crushed Augustus as well at the time. Yeah, he, he was devastated by this. So um, Agrippa's gone. Now that leaves Julia a widow. Because Agrippa's dead and Julia's on her own, yeah. Tiberius is then forced to marry Julia. Is it, was that a culture? Did he have to do that? Or was he just it was Augustus it? making sure his succession was secure. Tiberius had to marry Julia. Yeah. So even though he was with Vipsania. Vip Vipsania. Oh. Yeah, so he was in love with Vipsania. But he was happy. He was happy, they had a child, and he was forced to divorce her and then marry Julia, who he despised. Apparently, they, uh, Vipsania and Tiberius happened to meet each other a short while later, and Tiberius followed her all the way home in tears, trying to say sorry, and she would have none of it. She was so angry. Yeah, so... That's awful. Yeah. I feel really bad for Tiberius now. It, it's, it's sad. Sad state of affairs. It's almost if, if there was a therapist, he probably wouldn't have ended up as like the 6th, 8th, 7th, 8th and 5th worst for an <laughs> emperor. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe he just needed to talk about his feelings more. Yeah, really open yeah. up, you know, get inside. Yeah, but as you can see, he doesn't do that. And no. then more, more things happen. Oh, dear. Right, because then his brother dies, Drusus. Ah, oh, man. So Drusus, at this time, 
was fighting in Germany and he fell off a horse. And if you remember last week, he thought he got infected by falling off a horse. I, I guess if you fall off, you can like break, break legs and um, like snap things and bits yeah. can stick out. He, he broke his leg, the leg got infected, yeah. and then he died. Oh. Um, he managed to keep hold of living for a whole month. That's waiting cool. for his brother. Mm. Tiberius wow. rushed to go and meet him and just about got there, according to most of the things I read. I did read in one place that he didn't quite get there, but <laughs> oh, I do have just like, you know, getting there takes taking weeks and months on horses and you know, come on, we've got to get there. He goes past the flood, there's fallen trees and the thing. He just opens the door and goes, Drusus, you're there. So where the bloody <laughs> 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 I've been waiting for so... Ugh. Yeah, um, it's funny you should say uh, weeks and months, because actually, little interesting fact I found, Pliny, Pliny the Tiberius completed by carriage the longest 24 hours journey on record whilst hastening to Germany to his brother Drusus, who was ill. This covered 200 miles. So wow, Tiberius yeah. holds the land speed record <laughs> for the Romans. Up until that time, no one had travelled so far, so fast. Now, I actually did some calculations. Yeah, because this was such nah. a brilliant fact. Right, go on then. I, I had to do some. First of all, I converted those 200 miles into modern day miles, because that's obviously Roman miles, and it came up with uh, 176, I think. Okay, so. Then, what I did is I found out the speed he must have been travelling. Apparently, he must have travelled, on average, 7.6 miles an hour. Yes, over distance over time. Yeah. Um, so that got me thinking, what is 7.6 miles per hour? So I did a bit more research, mm. um, and I figured out that that is roughly the speed of a mobility scooter going on full. So he could have walked? <laughs> no, no, this mobility scooter, top of Rev, the range, up. revved up, really going for it. So uh, more of a trot then? Yeah, so when he heard like his jog. brother was about to die, I now have the image of him jumping on a mobility scooter and just driving through Italy for that's 24 <laughs> hours. That's fine. Or just, like, getting into this massive carriage, they're really ornate, really heavy, and it's like a, a pony, really elderly <laughs> pony. It's like, come on! Yeah. Come on, Gigi! It, it sounds so less impressive when you actually break yeah. it down like that, but I suppose even the fastest horses need to rest, don't they? So you think... So, yeah. so it's the equivalent of him just going at a constant 7.6, but he was also going through an enemy territory at this that's time. That's true. It wasn't just... Um, land that had been conquered so he was going through some hostile land so whilst he was on his mobility scooter there was lots of barbarians chasing him yeah, yeah. okay so he finally gets to the tent <laughs> that his brother is in and his brother passes away the legions loved drusus oh. he was out of the brothers drusus was the charismatic one he was the one that all the legions loved tiberius got stuff done he was a good leader but he didn't have the hearts and minds like Drusus said. So he was sort of the, the technical one. Yeah. He'd be the yeah. one that fills in the, the Excel chart, I'm guessing. Yeah, Tiberius was there in the tent with with his laptop, just figuring out the figures. Yeah. Drusus would be out partying with the soldiers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when he dies, they give him the honorific of Germanicus, which means the person who conquered the Germans. Although, technically, oh. he hadn't, but he'd done a yeah. lot of fighting in Germany. But uh, he was dead. Well, he's not going to know, is he? Yeah, he's dead, so he, he doesn't know that's his name. But yeah. it's um, a hereditary title, so the name then goes to his eldest son. Germanicus. Germanicus. So, at this point, I'm going to mention Drusus's two sons that he has. So you're going to have to go back to that family tree. Okay. Got it. Drusus, tree. yes, and there's so Drusus. Drusus, last week you put a cross for him because he died, and but put down that he had two children. Okay, so who's his... First one was Germanicus, because he got given the name, so historians just call him Germanicus. And then the second one... Was it, I'm going to take a while to stab in the dark here, Germanicus? No, no, it wasn't. Oh. So Ger Germanicus, his son, took after Drusus. He was charismatic, he was charming. Um, and then he had um, what the the sources claim to be a complete simpleton. Um, is his brother? Is his brother? He was. What was um, he called? Claudius. Cla so Claudius was was the kind of the, the, the simple one. Yeah, he was an embarrassment. I'll go into him a bit later as well. Right. So Tiberius also now is in this loveless marriage. He's not happy. He's hating yeah. life. He is then told by Augustus in six BCE. You've got to go to the east and sort out all the trouble with Parthia and Armenia again, because they're still misbehaving. What what do you think Tiberius does at this point? He either 
retreated. Yeah. Got someone else to fight for him. Maybe dug up a gripper because he thought, well, he's good in life. He might, he might do equally well. Zombie Agrippa. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> unstoppable. He, <laughs> he could still be. be alive now. Oh, well, he probably is. Unalive, I guess. Yeah. Um. So. Or just fight like a man. Or not go at all and chicken out. Yeah, that's what he did. Yay! He just didn't go. This is when he goes into self-imposed exile. Oh, yes. Yeah, he I turns around to Augustus and his mum, Livia, and says, No, I'm not going. <laughs> I'm going to... Rhodes! Rhodes, yeah, where yes. you had that lovely holiday. So it's like, I'm going back to have my holiday again. I was happy when I had that holiday, and now I'm just here with a wife I hate, and you're sending me off on a battle I don't want to go on to. Yeah. So off he goes. Augustus definitely didn't want him to go. Livia definitely didn't want him to go. There was one source I found that apparently Tiberius went on hunger strike. Oh, wow. To prove how serious he was. So like, I'm going to Rhodes, and if you don't let me, I'm not eating my olives. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So... I'm not drinking my wine. I'm just going to sit here, stare at this wall. Play with my Excel spreadsheet. Yes, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to damn well type in that data. Yeah. So eventually they obviously got fed up with him sulking. So I said, fine, go. <laughs> go if you've got to. So he goes to Rhodes. Rhodes at that time, it used to be a major sea power. Uh, but yeah. then Rome crushed them, that like made, Rome yeah. do. But it was still very much the centre of Greek culture, so it wasn't a, a backwards outpost. It was this really nice place. Hmm. Obviously, he had a good holiday there. Yeah. He had a nice time. According to Suetonius, when Tiberius got there, he greeted and chatted with simple Greeks as if they were equals. Tiberius hmm. just settled in, went native. That's what he wow. did. Um, sort of, you know, just, just a toga, because I'm sure they wore togas. I, I'm not sure what they'd wear on the roads. The, the senators would have wore togas. So maybe he got rid maybe of his toga, toga and just put on like a Bahama shirt. Or like that. Yeah. Uh, Bermuda shorts. Bermuda shorts. Zip flops. Yeah. So he probably just wore that. Just, just chilling out. So he's hanging out on the island. I get the impression this is one of his happiest times in his life, apart from when he was younger. He seems, he's escaping all the He's escaping thing. everything that's really annoying him. Now, if you remember last week, um, Julia... His still wife, Julia, they're not divorced, he's just run off. Yeah. And Julia, this time, it's found out that she is enjoying everyone's company a lot, if you remember. Yes, yeah, so she's well-known, isn't she? She is well-known. Um, and Augustus finds out how well-known, so has her <laughs> exiled. And, more importantly, because she's exiled, that means she is now divorced. Ooh! So Tiberius is freed up a little bit, which is great. Now, Tiberius sent letters to Augustus saying, oh, you two should make up, this is terrible. But <laughs> it was clearly off the show. You just know he was writing that laughing. Yeah. Just going, this is brilliant. Oh, I'm yeah. free. He then sends letters to Augustus saying, hey, I can come back now. I've, I've, yeah. I've had my holiday, I'm rested. I'm Yay. ready to return. So Augustus sends one to him saying, no, you should abandon all hope of visiting your family whom you were so eager to desert. Augustus is still taking this personally. He's still a bit miffed. He is definitely a bit miffed. He's not very happy at all. Tiberius goes back to the island. He's feeling very depressed at this point. His self-imposed exile is now a non-self-imposed exile. So he's just out of it now. Yeah, he's out of the loop. It's all gone wrong. And that perfect little island he was loving so much no longer seems quite so happy. I imagine oh. at this point he hangs up his Bermuda shorts, dons a raincoat or something. And there's like kind of like sad eighties music playing in the background. Yeah. Why do birds? That's a nice one. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a nice one. A sad song. But then, Ooh. hooray! Gaius dies in a siege. Oh, his son died. Augustus' son dies. Yeah. yeah. If you remember last week, his son dies. Augustus feels terrible, but we're doing Tiberius this week. Yeah. Tiberius is fist pumping with joy. This is great news Because he's for him. back to the air now, isn't he? Yeah. So he's now back. He's number one air. There's no one else Augustus can turn to. So he sends off another letter and Augustus goes, oh, fine, come back. And it's decided that Augustus would adopt Tiberius officially. <laughs> so he is now the heir. Augustus would adopt Tiberius, but only if Tiberius in turn adopted Germanicus. Ooh, his nephew. His, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which Tiberius does. That's fine. So, that, yes, yeah, so that's because sort of strengthens Augustus's... Yeah, Tiberius is getting on yeah. in years at this point. He has a son, remember, um, 
Drusus the son, but he's only got the one son, so just to make sure, um, Augustus makes him adopt Germanicus. Germanicus, by this point, is growing up to be just like his dad, Drusus, charismatic, brilliant, everyone's loving him. So Augustus is thinking he'd make a good emperor. It will go to Tiberius for a bit, but then Germanicus will take over. So Augustus is happy in the long term, but in the short term, yeah. he states that he would adopt Tiberius for reasons of the state. It certainly wasn't... <laughs> a love-filled no. adoption. I'm doing it for the better of the state and the the world. Yeah, I'm doing it because I have to, Tiberius. Yes. I don't want you to yes. be my son. Now go to the room. As long as we're clear. Right. All that is pre-becoming the Emperor. Yeah. That's a lot of stuff, isn't it? It is, but by this time he's already 54. Wow. Um, remember, oh. Augustus died old, so Tiberius is also old. It's a bit like Prince Charles at the moment. He's had to wait a long time. <laughs> yeah. So Augustus fell ill, and then, according to Suetonius, uh, Augustus kept Tiberius a long time in conversation, and after paid no attention to important business. So the last really official thing Augustus does is have an official chat with Tiberius, which I can only imagine was the lo lines of, right, don't mess this up yeah <laughs> please I've, I've, I've done all of this i've built this up from nothing i've fought well my friends fought <laughs> um they, i tried to but you know um, i have stood on the side of many important battles feigning yes. illness to get here do not mess my empire yes up. yes if it wasn't for this damn leg <laughs> so tiberius then goes out shortly after augustus dies and tiberius goes to the senate and the will is read out a famous first line of the will which was, since cruel fate has snatched me of my sons Gaius and Lucius, be Tiberius Caesar, my heir to two thirds. So essentially, Ooh. what he's saying is, since I lost my actual sons, I'm going to have to give Tiberius two thirds of my wealth. The other third went to other people. Yeah. But <laughs> essentially, you've now got Tiberius officially the heir, according oh. to the will. So he's officially the heir now. He's the basically well, you are going to the emperor, or no, he are is now, the emperor. The he emperor. is now okay. the emperor because Augustus is dead. The will declares him as the heir, so he becomes the emperor. Augustus also advises at this point that yeah. the empire should get no bigger. Oh, he's decided that this is about as big as it can get. So I'm guessing you sort of like you, you want to consolidate. It, I guess you want to you know build strong what you've got, or just um... yeah. I mean, there's some suggestion that the the disaster in Germany had put him off expansion <laughs> because he was still trying to expand then and. It all yeah. went wrong. Uh, maybe it's just he didn't want Tiberius trying to do anything. <laughs> yeah, just keep it just, calm. Just keep it calm until Germanicus can take over. Just do that for yeah. me. I'm going to die now. Don't mess this up. Yes. Tiberius then does his best not to have too much responsibility. Now this is the <laughs> suggestion that he's still, he still, he, like I said last week, he doesn't particularly want yeah. to be emperor. He wants not to be out the loop. So but... he's, he's doing what all great leaders do, delegate. Yeah. He, he says that he will take on the burdens of the Emperor until I reach a time when it may seem right to you to grant me some rest in my old age. He just now, has a big fat pension, doesn't he? Yeah, considering he's already 54, <laughs> that's, I'll do it for a bit, but please don't make me do this till I die, because <laughs> it's hard work. So, <laughs> so then in 14 CE, so... Oh, we're, we're now in the we're now, zeros. now in the pluses. In 14 CE, he's offered the titles, all the titles that Augustus had. Um, okay. So the the title of Augustus, the grass crown, the father of the people. Can't be the same grass crown, can it? Oh, sorry, it's not the grass crown. It's the civic crown. Uh -huh. a slightly different crown. So, um, but Tiberius was having none of it. He, he said, "Well, I've not earned that, <laughs> so I'm not going to have it. I'll be Augustus. I'm the emperor, but I'm not father of the people. I've not done anything to be father of the people. I'm not going to have the civic crown. You need to do things to do that. I've not done anything. And again, he was probably thinking they're going to love me." I am so humble. Yeah. And it, but no, everyone just went. No, you're the emperor. Get on with it. You're lazy. Yeah. Yeah. He was just seen as being lazy. But basically. do you think he was lazy, or do you think he actually genuinely believed that? I. He's coming across as lazy. I don't know. I get the impression he was being sincere. He was really? saying, "I, I shouldn't be given all this praise. I've not done anything to to deserve it yet. Let me earn the praise." I mean, that's fair because he. He hasn't necessarily done anything bad yet, really. He hasn't, no, not to no, warrant being sixth, eighth, fifth, and seventh worst emperor of all time. No, I'm guessing that's to come. Well, we'll see. <laughs> so, but I mean, he's getting on in years. He's got to pack it all in. Right. There was then an uprising in Pannonia and Germany. So the troops, the legion station there, 
revolt. Now, this Ooh. has been seen in the past as um, proof that Tiberius wasn't doing a very good job, but it would appear that actually the legions were promised a pay rise by Augustus. Augustus died, ah. and they went, where's that pay rise? I didn't agree to a pay rise. Yeah, so it was, just, it was a dispute over pay. So two ah. legions revolts. Tiberius, as I said, getting on in years now, decides to send Drusus to Pannonia and Germanicus to Germany cool. to sort it out. So, <laughs> That's quite nice. Yeah. Germanicus goes to Germany. Yeah, yeah. Um, the con his name meaning conqueror of Germany. Yes, yeah, so the, the troops there should love him. Yeah. Because the, he was the fighting there right. before. No, the lo locals won't, but they don't care. No, they're, they're, they're barbarians. Yeah. So Drusus, the son, is sent off to the legions in Pannonia. He takes with him Sejanus. Janus. He's he's a he's a Roman god, isn't he? Two faced god. January named after him. Janus. Yeah, yeah, but Maybe that's not that. him. No, no. This is just a man. Not a man with a no. really bad I'm, birth defect. <laughs> I'm going to come back to Sejanus later, so just note his name. But he, he goes with Drusus the son. Drusus the son basically says to the troops, look, what exactly are you hoping to do here? Yeah. The, the, do you really think that the Emperor's just going to let you do this and get away with it? And then he executes a bunch of the leaders. Oh, that's nice. And then the legions fall in line. Wow, that was easy. Yeah, he, he did it quite well. He put them down really quite well. Just, this is going to happen. Mm. Yeah. Um, then oh, he, wow. he goes away, and then some senators come along, and the troops kill the senators and start revolting <laughs> again. So Drusus goes back and says, no, seriously, stop now. Look, we'll get you the pay, but I've got to check it with my dad. Just just chill out, all right? He's got that sort of gift of the gab, hasn't he? He knows how to talk to them, I think. Or he's, he's at least firm and persuade and politic more. It's, it's a promising start. Yeah. It is a promising start. And then, equally, we've got Germanicus going over to the troops. Uh, is he the simpleton? No, his no. brother is the same. Sorry, person. yes. Yeah, no, he's fine. he's just put to one side. Right, no. <laughs> we are now going to go on in what I've called in my notes right. the Germanicus tangent because I've already mentioned him a few times, but we do need to know more about him. I'm, so I'm intrigued. We're going to rewind in history and actually go back to the birth of Germanicus. Okay, so do it. back to when Drusus, who died of the horse infection, yeah. Drusus the Elder. Yeah. So he was son of Drusus the Elder. He was yeah. Germanicus was born in 15 BCE. He was the star of the family. He was handsome. He was a public speaker in Greek and Latin. He enjoyed literature. When he grew a bit older, he wrote a number of comedies in Greek. He could write. He could fight. He could put yeah. on a good show. He was. There was a reason why Augustus was shoehorning him <laughs> into being the next emperor after Tiberius. He was a clever, talented guy. Yeah, he had a gripper what, Yeah, whatever it was that Caesar had and Augustus had, he yeah. clearly had a bit of that spark as well. So, um, he's doing well. As you've just mentioned, Germanicus had a brother, a little brother called Claudius. Y yeah. Augustus wrote a letter to Livia saying, The public must not be given a chance of laughing at him and at us. Aww. We therefore must decide in advance whether he can or cannot be entrusted with offices of state generally. So we're saying um, we need to see whether he can do something or before he embarrasses us. Yeah, it was generally decided he's just going to embarrass us a lot. Let's let's put him to one side. The kid's an idiot. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So the... Especially when he had this rock star of a brother who was just brilliant at everything. Yeah, oh, it's supposed to be, it must be sad for him. Well, you might not have been aware of it, but do you think it's sad for him? Thinking, oh, there's my brother. He yeah. gets all this stuff. I'm just sitting here chewing on a rock. <laughs> Maybe you liked his rock. I'd like to think... Claudius had a pet rock. <laughs> he like walks around with it on a little string, <laughs> pulling it around with it. Claudius put yeah. the rock away. <laughs> Can't bring that in public. Let him have it, it keeps him calm. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> right, so then Germanicus marries Agrippina. Now this is Agrippina too, so back to the family tree. Yes. Back to the family I, tree, I, let's yeah, add um... that on. So G Agrippina too, who yeah. we're just going to call Agrippina, is married to Germanicus, who is handily right next to them on your family tree. See? Yeah, yeah. that's good, isn't it? Right. They have nine children. Nine children. Germanicus is... He's a goer. He, he's a living legend, isn't he? Only he's yes. dead now, obviously. Um, yeah. But, yeah, he, he wastes wow. no time doing anything. So we are only going to focus on one. Good. <laughs> but in the meantime, we're sort of going to focus on three. There are two elder brothers. Okay. And then a younger brother called Little Gaius. Little G, okay. Yeah. 
And we don't need to worry about two older brothers too much, but they do come in for a little bit. So we've got little G, and then two brothers, who we just remember being the sons of Germanicus. Okay. Okay. So we've now caught up with the Germanicus tangent. So we have now go back to the main storyline where Drusus has put down his legions revolt. Germanicus in Germany, meanwhile. Do you yeah. think he's going to perform well? Well, he's, he's quite... He's quite good isn't he? He is good. He goes up to Germany and basically goes hey guys you want your bonuses? Let's go and get your bonuses. Oh nice. Let's go into Germany let's earn it. and let's just steal all the stuff yeah. and that can be your bonus. Oh booty. So instead of Drusus's sort yourselves out I'm going to crush you. Germanicus <laughs> has a very different approach. His is come with me everyone let's go and earn our bonuses that's clever oh, the troops love him get him on board absolutely love him they even go to where the uh, Tutenberg disaster was i've got a quote from tastus here on the open ground were whitening bones scattered where men had fled heaped up where they had stood and fought back <laughs> fragments of spears and horses' limbs lay there, also human heads fastened to t tree trunks. In groves nearby were the outlandish altars at which the Germans had massacred the Roman colonels and commanders. I get the feeling that's a bit propagandary. <clears throat> Possibly, but there was a big slaughter. Yeah. And no one would have cleaned it up. That's true. So this is a few I'm years later. Age. Yeah, so they find wow. this site, and guess what's there? The standards. <gasps> the flags! Yeah, so Germanicus brings back some more lost standards, so he, he brings back the honour of Rome. The troops love him even more. And don't forget, they loved his dad, they love him. He is the star. Drusus worked hard, but Germanicus... He's, he's, he's ace in it, isn't he? He is definitely ace of it. All of Rome love him. Can you <sighs> see a problem? Well, they're going to want him to be the one in... Ch the heir, I'm guessing. And Dr Drusius... Well, he is the heir, because oh. he's older than Drusus. But Drusus is just going to be jealous, isn't he? It's like a sibling yeah. rivalry now. Drusus might be jealous, and also, who else might be jealous? Ah, Tiberius. Tiberius himself. Because he never had this Tiberius worry, Tiberius is starting to get a bit paranoid. Tiberius is thinking, uh, they're going to overthrow me, because they love him, and they hate me. Tiberius has just never managed to get people to get on with him. He was a prickly customer <laughs> so he's not got many friends no, no he um, yeah. he spent all that time in Rhodes for a start it's it's, it's not going too well, he, well he almost acted like he didn't like Rome exactly and so it's not going down well and he then you've got Germanicus who's just this this brilliant young general Inspiring who's getting leader. stuff done so everyone's starting to go yeah look at him he's, he's been yeah. all right um so Tiberius sends him off to the east, which is a clear sign that he's definitely the mm -hmm. successor. So this is a good sign. He goes off to the east, but he sends with him the governor of Syria called Piso. This is not a good thing. It didn't seem too bad to begin with, but Germanicus argued with Piso all the time. It was almost as if Piso was there to deliberately stop everything he planned to do. Why do uh, you think that? To make him not succeed. It's because he was deliberately put there <gasps> to stop him oh achieving my anything. Who, Tiberius, so who, who sent, who Tiberius sent, Piso sent Piso with him, really? whispered in his ear, just knock him down a peg or two. Make sure he doesn't look too good. Then Germanicus gets ill. Oh, oh. And dies. No, I liked I was starting to like him. Yeah. He's, he's like a hero. He's dead. But on his deathbed, he gasped out a few more words. What do you think he said? Ouch. Mm, maybe he did. <laughs> did he... I'm going to give you a clue. Did he get ill by being poisoned or something? Ah, uh, yeah, he did. He was poisoned. Ah. Who did he blame? Oh, Piso. Yeah. He blames <gasps> Piso on his deathbed of killing him. Oh, that... Because even if that's not true, that's going to make Piso... That's going to make the legions and army very angry with Piso. Um... Possibly, but no. They're, they're very far away from the legions oh, of Germanicus at the time. Um, it does make everyone in Rome very angry, though, because everyone loves Germanicus. So um, Agrippina and those children that we've just mentioned go back to Rome yeah. and start shouting at the top of their voices, Piso murdered Germanicus. <laughs> so the Senate put Piso on trial, and he's going to have to discuss everything that ha has happened. It's fairly obvious he did poison him. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, he commit suicide again the listeners can't see the inverted yeah. commas the theory is tiberius had him killed before he could 
yeah. spill the beans that so, Tiberius ordered <laughs> the kill. So it's like, I'm just like, he's in a cell somewhere, the guards come down this morning and say, oh, he must have accidentally, brutally stabbed himself 16 times while he was <laughs> brushing his teeth. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, Piso's dead, <laughs> Germanicus is dead. Just death. Yeah. So, uh, Germanicus was the, the shining hope, and he's dead. But don't forget... He's got a son. And he's got three sons. Well, he's, got... he's got two older brothers and he's got... Little um, Gaius. Little Gaius, that's yeah. the one. Okay, we're going to take a little bit of a break from the main story whilst I go on the second tangent of today's episode. This tangent is called two. the Sejanus Tangent. So he was the one who went with Drusus the son to go and squash the rebellion. Yes. Yeah, back to the start of Sejanus's life. He was born to an equestrian family, so that is like Horses. middle class. He's not senatorial class. He raises to become the head of the Praetorian Guard. Now, do you remember when I mentioned the Praetorian Guards last week? Were, were they like the private guard for Augustus? Yes. Now, under Augustus, they were kept separately throughout Italy. And Augustus wouldn't allow too many to congregate in one place. <laughs> Power. Yeah, he just knew that that was a silly yeah. idea. You've got armed men in Rome, let's not get them too powerful. Yeah, you, you wouldn't say, right, all these sharp blades, have some wine, meet yeah. whatever you want. Sejanus, so under Tiberius manages mm. to um, convince Tiberius to actually build this new place for the Praetorian Guards within Rome, where you had 1,200 men under the Praetorian Guard commander's command. Yeah. So Janus then goes off with Drusus, the son, to quell the uprising, like I said. They put it down, but so Janus and Drusus fall out during this journey. They can't stand each other. Drusus mm. is thinking, I'm the son of the Emperor, I should be in charge. So Janus is thinking, I get on with Tiberius really well. I'm in charge of the Praetorian Guard. I should have more power. They can't stand each other at all. In fact, at one point, Drusus punches him in the face. That's not good way making friends. So that was a little Sejanus tangent because you're gonna need that to know about him coming up. Tiberius, by this point, is starting to tire of politics. Well, he, yeah, it's probably like 56 now, something. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, he's getting on in years. It's understandable he's tiring from politics. He starts holidaying, uh, if that's a word, mm -hmm. in Capri, the island of Capri. Oh. Um, I heard it's nice then. Possibly to escape his mother's influence. Apparently, <laughs> Livia was very over to, uh, overbearing at this point, kept trying to, to tell him what to do, even though he was the emperor. There's another <laughs> suggestion like that, that um, he was oversensitive about his appearance. Um, oh. Yeah, he, he's going bold at this point. His skin's not too good, so he just wants to hide away. Uh, the other <laughs> idea is that it's actually Sejanus keeps whispering in his ear, why don't you have a holiday? Leave me in charge. Uh, Go and have a holiday. Yeah, you relax. I'll take care of yeah, it for you. I'll no take problem. care of it. Shink, shink, shink. <laughs> Helpful Sejanus will take care of it. Don't yeah. you worry. According to Suetonius, Tiberius went to Capri particularly attracted to the island because it was accessible by only one small beach being everywhere else girt with sheer cliffs of great height and deep water. It's like a mini fortress then, isn't it? Yeah, I like the word girt in that. I'm not even sure what that means. I had to look it up. Standing up. It, it's linked to the word like girdle, like to surround. Oh, restrained. And restrained, yeah. 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 Right. So I, it's a word I'm going to try and get into everyday use now. Things are girt. So <laughs> I'm feeling well girt. Capri was girt with these cliffs. Now I've got these pictures, we've put them up on the um, the website. It looks really impressive. You've got these high cliffs and this huge mansion on top of it. Are these photographs? No, it's a pencil drawing. I was um, going to say. Yeah, it's, it's a very good pencil drawing. It's an um, artist's yeah. impression of what it could have looked like. So if you're listening, just think sort of Game of Thrones kind of Yes, or thing. Lord of the Rings. It's sort of like a massive cliff with a, lots of buildings on top. Yeah. See behind it seems like very precariously perched almost. Yeah, right? really sort of on the edge on of these own. cliffs with these giant statues. Apparently, um, according to some Tiberius love, nothing more of an evening to go out onto the like the balcony area and throw people off the cliff. I, well, that's what yeah. you do. You isn't do it? what's the sun setting. Then his son, Drusus the son, dies. Yeah. That's sad. That is sad. Because that's another like massive Big event because he was well, he was the the heir. He was the heir. Once oh. Germanicus has gone, Drusus was gone. The heir has gone. Tiberius at this point just goes to Capri. He seems to completely lose it by this point. He oh. goes, I can't do this anymore. He retires to Capri completely. He never goes back to Rome ever. He leaves Sejanus to deal with all the correspondence. So oh, I, 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 I need to go through Sejanus now to get to Tiberius. Yeah. You know, you can imagine that. Um, Oh, um, Sir James got really bad news. Drusus has died. 
Oh, 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 oh no, that's, oh, that's, that's really sad. That's really ruined my day. It's funny you should say that. <laughs> we'll, we'll get on to that. Right. Excellent. <laughs> okay, so, Tiberius leaves Sejanus to deal with the correspondence. Tiberius, at this point, thinks Sejanus is the best thing since sliced bread. Of course, he's probably made himself that way. Well, the, just the best thing. They didn't have sliced bread back then. That's so, true. Yeah, yeah, so just the best thing. Best thing since the plank and the nail. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was good, wasn't it? That was pretty awesome. Yeah. So it's, Tiberius refers to Sejanus as my partner in toil at this point and has statues of him put up in the city. Wow. Although whether that was a Tiberius putting up the statues or whether Sejanus yeah. just going, the emperor told me through a letter that you should put up five, no, six statues. Six of, bronze gold statues. statues of, of me. Of me, yeah, yes. just all over the place. Yes, make sure we get lots of, you know, definition on the muscles and that. Yes. So, I'm now going to refer back to Agrippina and her children. Now, so, Agrippina yeah. are, is Germanicus's wife. So, oh. Agrippina and all her children, Germanicus's, um, and then rounded up and killed. What, say that, like what? So Germanicus's widow, yes. Agrippina, and their children are rounded up and killed by Sejanus. He just wiped out Germanicus's family. Yeah, he is telling Tiberius that they're plotting against him. Wow. Yeah. Well, I say this, little Gaius is left alive. Because he's so small at this point, he's not a threat. So little Gaius is still alive. Yeah. He is wow. sent to go and live with family, but eventually is sent to go and live on Capri with um, Tiberius. They're now dead. And they, they weren't just rounded up and killed, they were put on trial. This is what we call the treason trials. If they were put on trial, it's all a show. Yeah. It was Sejanus just illegal killing killing. people off that yeah. he didn't want. Yeah, exactly. It was legal systematic killing, which is in some ways more terrifying. Yeah. Okay, right. It's then discovered that Lavilia, this is a new name, Lavilia. Lavilia. But if you go to your family tree, we can put a new face that on it. That sounds female. It is female. Yes. So, baby Drusus, Tiberius's son, his wife is Lavilia. So, D D Drusus, the, his wife is Lavilia. Yes. Okay. Drusus' son's wife is Lavilia. Drusus is now dead, of course, because he suddenly dead. died. Of a mysterious... Of a mysterious disease oh. or thing. He yeah. just dropped dead. Right. He just happened to be holding a, a little bottle with a skull and crossbones. Now, bones. as all good detectives know, who do you blame when someone mysteriously dies? Uh, at the moment, I'm going to blame uh, Sir Janus, because he sounds like a... You just picture him with, like, a pencil-thin moustache. and Oh, yeah. And a monocle. I imagine him with a, a pipe as well. I don't know why. Yeah, possibly. And just, yeah. Kill him. Yeah, he's he's. You just do not get a good sense no. from Sejanus. So if I told you that it actually turned out that that Lavilia was secretly having an affair with Sejanus all these years. Oh man. Yeah. <gasps> so who do you think killed Drusus? Lavilia. Yes, Lavilia killed Drusus on Sejanus's orders. So Sejanus could try and either become heir or generate some heirs himself because Sejanus at this point writes to Tiberius yeah. and says, can I marry Lavilia now that she's not with your son? And Tiberius actually says no. Oh, why? Yeah, this was a shock. This is the first time Tiberius has got one up on Sejanus. Yeah. Probably because he was an equestrian. Nothing more than that. He, he was a horse. Yeah, he, he was from the horsey rank of society. He wasn't Rather than enough. the senatorial rank of society. Bring down the blood. So Sejanus's plans are scuppered slightly here. However, he's still very powerful. Dio writes, Sejanus was so great a person by reason both of his excessive haughtiness and his vast power that, to put it briefly, he himself seemed to be emperor as Tiberius spent his time on the island of Capri. He is now in all but name emperor. He's the puppet master. He is the puppet master. He is Goodness. loving life. The only crimp in his plan is he couldn't marry Lavilia. If he'd managed to do that, they could have Still. started to generate some heirs and he could have actually taken over. So, everything's going well for Sir James. One day, a really wordy and ample letter arrives from Tiberius. Yeah. And Sejanus has heard about this in advance, obviously, <laughs> because he knows what's going on. Yes, and this letter is giving 
Sejanus power of the Tribune, giving him more power. He yeah, can now okay. um, create laws, veto laws. He has a lot more power than he would have had before. So this is still Sejanus's plan working really well. Macro was the person delivering the letter. Macro, so he's like the, the letter postman. Yeah. He was actually um, the person in charge of the fire service at the time, which Augustus oh. had brought in. So he was, yeah, he was quite high up and he'd gone to visit Tiberius and he came back with the letter. So the Senate start reading out this really long letter. A bit rambly bit, like he's a bit mad. Yeah, so it just <laughs> keeps going and going. And so Janus is sitting in the Senate House, grinning away, because he knows what's coming at the end of this letter. His plans are all coming together. Right, now, in your mind's eye, suddenly cut away from that scene right. to Macro, who is running around, delivering a second letter to all the Praetorian Guard. Now, remember, Sir Janus is in charge of the Praetorian Guard, but all the people underneath him are suddenly receiving another letter. Oh, is this Tiberius being very clever? This is Tiberius being very oh, clever. Oh, yes. Suddenly, at the end of this very boring and long letter, it suddenly says, oh, and by the way... So Janus is a traitor, execute him. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, all the Praetorian um, prefects that are high up now have it in writing, so they go over. Macro is then put in charge of the Praetorian prefects. The senators hate Sir Janus by this point, because he keeps killing them off, accusing, to be, accusing them of being traitors. Yeah. So they grab him, and he's strangled later that day. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so that's Sir Janus gone. That, that... But that was so neatly and cleverly... That's yeah, fantastic. I know. You just don't expect it, do you? So Janus has no. been so clever building up all of this, and then suddenly Tiberius gets wind of it and goes, fine, kill him. But the cleverness, like a long, distracting... That could be a film. It could be a film. Long, distracting letter. Yeah. I've got a letter. <laughs> yeah. Sign now. Yeah. So it's Hollywood, it would be very Yeah, you'd have but... those accents, wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. So then, all of a sudden, he dies. Right. You may be wondering... At this point, why yeah. is Tiberius considered so bad? In my head, what I'm now thinking, after because I was all I was thinking, well, it's Sejanus. He's the the, the nasty person. Yeah. But I'm starting to think now, this is the beginning. Yeah. Of Tiberius's reign of horror. Yeah. Now there's this <laughs> this quote. This is a letter to the Senate from Tiberius, and it just shows that he's starting to lose it a little bit. <laughs> the pigs he's telling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the little people are telling me you must make all donkeys free. <laughs> I'll eat my own knees. <laughs> yeah, just got an image of them all in the Senate House and they get the latest letter and everyone just takes a deep breath and the person at the front opens it, scans it, deep sigh. <laughs> <sighs> what is it this week? <laughs> right, so, got into the suit. According to Suetonius, he says, What I write to you, fathers, or how I shall write, or what I shall not write at all at the present time, may the gods and goddesses afflict me worse than I feel myself suffer every day if I know. So he doesn't know what he's on about. No. Oh, that's nice. He's basically saying, I haven't got a clue what is going <laughs> on. What is going on in Rome? Who am I? <laughs> I don't know. If I did, I will still wouldn't know. Yeah, I just... Just, look, guys, sort Rome out. I'm having my holiday. Yeah. Yeah. I've got my pet rock from Claudius. <laughs> Poor Claudius. What would he do? I don't know. No. I imagine right. he's got a little, like, a limestone rock, and now now uh, Tiberius has got a little, I don't know, sandstone. Yeah, yeah. And he gets sad when it wears away slowly. Oh, that is sad. So, Tiberius fully retreats with a handful of people. Like I said, little Gaius is with them at this point. Yeah. He then starts setting lots of more treason trials. Mm. So he's rounding anyone up who's ever been related to, spoken to, walked past Sejanus, and killing them. It's also when he's, it says he is starting to behave very badly. Now, <laughs> just now? Well, personally, on okay. his island. Now this is um, written after he's dead by okay. people who didn't like him, because no one liked him throughout his whole reign, because he didn't seem very interested. But we so, have to question the... the yeah, how true these uh, accusations are, we don't really know. Mm. But we do know that the accusations were there at the time, so we get a sense okay. of how the people felt about him. Now, because we have marked this as a clean podcast, and we try our hardest not to swear, I'm not going to tell you on air 
what he did because you really don't want to know. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to tell you now, and I'll just put some nice lift music on or something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> genuinely horrible that is shocking that is like, horrible like, but i get the feeling that is the case of someone thought what is literally the worst thing i can say about him and i'm gonna say he did that because there's no actual evidence that that happened okay so tiberius then decides he'd best go back to rome we're not sure why and maybe he never really meant to but he starts journeying back to rome yeah and all of a sudden he dies. <gasps> yeah. The end. Age of 77, so it's not unexpected, on the 16th of March, 37. That's very accurate. The crowds rejoice and they party. Little Gaius is there. Macro, yeah. remember the uh, Praetorian Guard um, yeah, yeah. leaders there. And they're all partying, they're all celebrating. And then someone comes out and goes, oh, he's all right, he's still alive. Part of, that's why we're celebrating! That's why Woo! we're celebrating! Put that banner down! Yeah, get rid of it! <laughs> Pop the balloons! <laughs> Especially the ones who say, I'm glad he's dead. Yeah. Um, so, little Gaius, who's a bit older now, um, hears that he's still alive. So he sends in Macro to check if he's okay. So Macro yeah. goes in to check if he's okay, and surprisingly comes out and goes, Oh no, he is dead. And little guy says, is that a pillow in your hand there? Which is then <laughs> swiftly dropped. And then there's a bit of a pause. And then um, one person near the back goes, Ey! and the party continues. Yeah. They put the banner back up. Yeah. He is really dead. He's back up again. That's... Yeah. Ooh, oh. <laughs> so it's, if he didn't die naturally, there was a, definitely a good chance he was murdered because he didn't die when they thought he had, had died. a helping hand. Yeah. Okay, so. Wow. That is the life of Tiberius. Let's rank him and see how he does. Fightius Maximus. Maximus! Okay, so in this round, like we said last week, we're going to discuss how fighty and how maximus -y he is. Yeah, I mean, you see... Well, he, he, he was a bit more fighty than Augustus was in terms yeah. of he actually fought. Yeah, we, he's actually done quite well. Bizarrely, though, not when he's the emperor. We have got, for Fightius Maximus, he was well-liked by the legions. Yep. Not as much as his brother... His brother and his nephew, Germanicus, were both loved by the legions, but Tiberius was respected by the legions, and they were more than happy to fight for him. They knew yeah. he'd get the job done. I kind of feel like he's, he's hanging on to his brother's coattails a little bit. Well, not really. He was considered to be the best general. Oh, really? Um, well, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's strategic. Drusus mind, I guess. was more charismatic. He yeah, was okay. the ones they loved. Um, all of the Augustan expansion. So remember last week when we looked at the expansion? Yeah, he did a lot for that. He did. I mean, Agrippa did some. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, we, oh. but that colouring in the Alps and all the stuff by Germany expanding oh, that way—that was Tiberius and some Drusus in there. And he as got well. his own back with the barbarians. I yeah, guess. he did. So um, he helped expand. So not in when he was the emperor, the the borders didn't move. But no. Um, so he followed. He followed what he was told to. By well, yeah, exactly. He was just following what Augustus said. So you can't really count that against him. No, not really. I yeah. Mean. And uh, he did expand the empire during his life, so that that's some points. Mm. So here's a, a very short overview. 25 BCE, he campaigned in Parthia mm. and won back those standards. Yeah. In 15 BCE, he won the Alps, coloured in the, the mountains. Map. Yeah. Yeah. At four or five CE, he campaigned deep into Germany. Yeah. And um, got some of the morale back up after the Tutenberg disaster. In 6 CE, he put down a revolt in the Balkans, which I haven't talked about for time reasons. And then he became emperor and did no more fighting after that. But he did obviously send out his adopted son and his son. But I, th I think the biggest crown jewel in that, and I think this needs to be part of the fightiest Maximus, is the fact that he got rid of Sejanus in that way he did. Oh, well, yeah. No, this is just the army stuff. He also, yeah, he fought politically, didn't he? Yeah. He f and from... Out of nowhere, you're just expecting Sejanus to win that all the way, aren't you? I, I thought he was going to. I thought he was going to be the next gen um, emperor, because I don't know what comes next. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't know. You thought that was going to be Sejanus. With a different name, probably. Ah, interesting. Out of interest, do you know who's next? I genuinely don't. 
because I haven't talked about airs at all. No, and that's why I think I don't tell me. Oh well, I'm going to come into it at the end. Oh, that's okay. It's going to be like a, that last little boom. Yeah. Oh at the my end. good lord! Yeah. I thought he was dead. <laughs> it's Judas Germanicus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he came back to life. So, um, <laughs> this is a letter to Tiberius from August Augustus. Your summer campaigns, dear Tiberius, deserve my heartiest praise. I am sure no other man alive could have conducted them more capably than yourself in the face of so many difficulties. That's quite nice. So quite Augustus glowing. said he was the best man alive. Wow. I could only assume this letter was after Agrippa had died. Yes. Because obviously Agrippa would have been the best. So they're, they're the good points. Yeah. Um, against him, he didn't fight as the emperor, so he didn't try and expand the empire anymore. But like you mentioned, he was told not to. <laughs> Legions revolted under him, but uh, yeah, hey, that's not great, is it? He did it... put him down straight away. That's true. Yeah, he, he did. He was very proactive in sorting it out. Yeah, well, or at least he delegated well, because yes. the two both put it down in very different ways. Because if you're a good leader as well, you know you work on the strengths of the people below yeah. you. So yeah. where you're good at talking, and they they stop. knew he was they were the heirs, so he had to get experience. Yeah. So that, that's all I could get against him. Well, let's look. Just going back a bit, like when we did Augustus, right? We did fight his Maximus. Um, see, we gave him quite a lot. In fact, if I remember correctly, we gave him twelve, didn't we? But that wasn't for his personal fighting ability. That was no, more for no. the fact that he expanded the empire more than anyone else ever does. You've got to get credit for that. Of course. Um, but I would say he deserves more than Augustus. I think he does. For example, he fought. Yeah, he fought. <laughs> he was part of that expansion that sword. Augustus got credit for. What are you going for? Out of 10, I'm going to give him... So Augustus has got 12 between us, didn't he? Yeah, we gave him 6 each. I, I'm going to go to 7. I'm going to give him seven. 1 more than Augustus, personally. Okay, I, I I think I'm a bit more impressed. I'm going to go to 8. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I think... Again, this is in the early days where they're gaming rather than losing territory. That's true, that's true. Um, not that he does gain any, but like say so he consolidates. Um, mm. And he's considered one of the best generals Rome ever produce, produces. So, yeah, so there we go. We've got it. He yeah. has 15 for Phytius Maximus. That's not bad. So he's, he's trumped Augustus there. He has. Approvium crazium. Well, okay, straight away, he was absolutely mental. <laughs> by the end of it. Well, yeah, but I mean, don't forget, by the end of it, it was him in his 70s. Everyone goes a bit crazy in their 70s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nothing to do on Capri, but, like... Talk to seagulls and... Yeah, watch the pose. TV that's put up in the corner of the room near the oh, ceiling. Slightly faded, silent, grainy. Yeah. Pet his pet rock. Yeah, his pet rock. Sandstone. So he didn't have anything to do, unless you believe the rumours that he did have things to do and it was quite hideous. But mm. we'll go into that in a moment. No. Right, what I've got for <laughs> um, reasons why he was a, cra a crazy person. Baby Agrippa. Now, yes. If you remember him, I, I glossed over this earlier, because mm. I knew I was going to talk about him more here. Baby Agrippa um, was Agrippa's son. Yes. Hence the name Baby Agrippa. Yeah. And he was the one that Augustus said, oh, he cannot ever be the emperor. He is an awful human being. Let's go and send him to a rock. I remember that one, yeah. yeah. Now, last week I said I, he was sent to a tiny rock. I got that wrong. It was actually Julia who was sent to the tiny rock that was only half a mile big. Because she knew a lot of people. Yeah. So, maybe Agrippa's on his rock that was slightly bigger than we thought last week, but yeah. it's still a rock that he's on. <laughs> um, and then, after Augustus's death, he suddenly dies. Baby Ripper dies. Yeah, he's executed. Oh. Now, did Tiberius order the death of him as soon as he became the emperor so he could be the only definite heir? Now remember, Tiberius is in the Claudius side of the family. Yeah. Maybe Agrippa is on the Julii side of the family. So there would have been some tensions Even there. just from the families, because the Julii would be going, we want him because he's our family. And yeah, we exactly. Want him. So did Tiberius just have him killed? I, I mean... Of the time, it's what would have happened. Mm. Now, Augustus <laughs> is the other obvious candidate. On his deathbed mm. said, go and kill him, otherwise he'll be trouble. But I must admit, if you weigh the two options up... He just um, have more to lose. Augustus exiles people. Yeah. In later life, Tiberius kills Germanicus and kills Sejanus. Yes, in a brilliant way. Yeah, so uh, I think it might have been Tiberius. I, I think, yeah, I think that's convinced me. Yeah. So I think we can say that he had baby Agrippa killed, so that's yeah. one person. 
Um, a little interesting aside to this story, apparently one of the slaves um, who was with Baby Agrippa stole Baby Agrippa's ashes and then impersonated Baby Agrippa, who obviously wasn't a baby by this point. Okay, right. Up. Is, is this sort of like he had a sock puppet cover the ashes and a sock puppet in? <laughs> Hello, I'm Agrippa! <laughs> Because that's not going to fool anyone. It's not. Well, I, I want to know why why he needed the ashes to impersonate him. Did he? Yeah, it's like, like a drink, like symbolic. I will become part of me, sort of thing. That's disgusting. I I hope not. You try no. and drink ashes. That's not going to end well. No, first of all, it's a solid. You you just like <laughs> clag in your mouth. Yeah, it? Oh. Be like eating raw porridge. Oh. It's not called raw porridge, is it? It's just called oats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, um, that slave apparently was arrested and quietly executed. Then, obviously, you've got the fact that he ordered Germanicus killed. Yeah. Then you've got the fact that... Um, These are big hitters as well. Yeah, um, Sejanus Sej- yeah. was then killed. Clever way, though. Then you've got all these treason trials. Now, you get, mm. get the impression that they really started by Sejanus, like you said, and it was his way of securing his political um, legacy. Yeah, he did because he's paranoid, though. To start off with, you have things like um, Cordus, who was a man who was accused by Sejanus of having praised Brutus, and Cassius, saying Cassius was the last of the true Romans. So oh. someone saying the people who fought against Augustus were in the right, so he was rounded up and killed, if you can round up one person. <laughs> um, yeah, so they, 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 that was typical of the treason trial. Just somebody said, he said this, right, kill him. Yeah, people were rounded up and... Like you said earlier, it was legal mass killings. Yeah. Yeah, so not pleasant at all. But it got to the stage where it was ridiculous. One man was accused of going into the toilet with an image of the face of an emperor. What do you think that was that he went into the toilet with? Did he have a bit of loose change in his pocket? Yes, what? he did. It was on a coin. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so... Because um, I've been to the toilet with, a co- with coins in my pocket. And... Yeah, I've never been tried for treason. No, I've never been But from now either. on, empty your pockets. Leave them outside the toilet. Yeah. Yeah, and then never see it again. No. No. The treason trials just degenerate into this crazy free-for-all. Um, but you get the sense that Tiberius wanted Sejanus' supporters out of the way. But yeah. he wasn't in Rome. So it was more the senatorial class getting one up on each other, using the treason trials to try and l- levy political power. Yeah. The it... whole thing had turned into a mess. So how much was it just mismanagement? Or how much was it Tiberius how bent on a wave of destruction. But this this is why he's on those top lists. It's for these reasons. But is he really that bad? I'm... The thing is, because, like, the thing that we shall not talk about... Yeah. ...is really swaying this to me. I, I, right. I, what are you I, going for? Gut feeling, I think I'd like to go for a seven again. Oh, I was going for seven as well. Yeah, yeah, we go. I was. Oh. So that is 14... For Approbium Crasium. Successes Ultimus! Okay, so I've got a quote here from Velaeus, which reads, What public buildings did he construct in his own name or that of his family? Exclamation <gasps> mark. With what pious munificence, exceeding human belief, does he now rear the temples to his father? Exclamation mark. For a feeling of kinship leads him to protect every famous monument. This guy loved him. However, I read this sentence in a book and I straight away went, that sounds a little bit off compared to everything else I've read about Tiberius. So I looked up Tiberius writers. No, but might as well have done. It's a contemporary source. So he was around when Tiberius Mm. was. And guess who his patron was? Tiberius? Yes, it was Tiberius. (laughs) (laughs) So... (laughs) Yeah, so he obviously had to say that. So um, evidence suggests that this is not true at all. Very right. few buildings were built during Tiberius's reign. So um, not he didn't sort of because Augustus really built up Rome. Oh didn't yeah, he? yeah, he did marble, so much, gold, so bronze. Much. Yeah, whereas Tiberius did did nothing. Probably he did repair the wall. He did rebuild the Temple of Castor. Oh, so he rebuilt rebuilt. He rather. rebuilt a temple, but that that's okay. about it. Laws according to Gibbon, the laws if one leaves out the treason courts. <laughs> were judiciously enforced. Grain levies 
indirect taxes and other public revenue were managed by associations of Roman knights. His own affairs the emperor entrusted to the most competent people, some of whom he knew by only reputation. He did all he could to combat bad harvests and mm. difficulties of navigation, sparing neither expenses or effort, and if he had disputes with a private citizen, they were settled in the law courts. The heavily rigged yeah. law courts. <laughs> But at least he didn't just chuck them in. No, he's perfectly legal. Yeah, yeah. He went through a court, it's fine. Yeah. So, I mean... That sounds all positive. Yeah, it is. It's, what that's basically saying is... Good money management. Yeah, he worked on his Excel sheet fairly well. He kept Rome ticking over. So no advancements, but just... No, yeah. it carries on. He did exactly what Augustus wanted to keep everything. Yeah, just, the just same. don't mess this up, please. It's, it's quite good I mean, about, the, like, if there's there were bad harvest, you try everything to, to sort that... Yeah, That's yeah, why I'm inferring yeah. from that. Yeah, and the same with um, difficulties of navigation, so if roads are going... By new compass. Park, so, yeah, by people compasses. Were they invented? They weren't invented then, were not, they? No. no. The, the Vikings used, like, birds to fly towards shore, didn't they? But they, they, weren't Rome, they weren't very good at using boats, though, were they? Were no, Romans. the Romans, they kept to the shore. Maybe because they, they didn't have compasses. Yeah, just drop them in the sea and see if they float. Nope. <laughs> I'll go in there. <laughs> Kill that horse. <laughs> Where should we go? Not off the boat. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, Let's try it. Everything's safe. Okay, so that that's about all I could get yeah. for good. Um, negatives. Hmm. People lived in fear of their lives because the treason trials were going crazy. Now, how much of that is people or how much that is the senatorial class that wrote about it? Well, I mean... I know that a lot of the information we get now about the past, all the sources are written by the people that had the power to do that. Yeah, so, I mean, how much did these treason trials really affect the general public? It's hard to say. Maybe they just saw it as entertainment. Oh, look, all the rich people are wiping each other out. Let's go and watch the courts. So, uh, yeah. Uh, No one liked Tiberius from day one. Oh, really? Uh, As an emperor? Yeah, as an emperor. Oh. Because, remember, when he came in, he was saying, I don't really want this job. So he never really endeared himself to the public. He never... Augustus would always show up to events and hold big games, and he was... A man of the people. Um, Tiberius rarely held games. He was just sat yeah. at home with his rock and his exile spreadsheet doing nothing. And, um, yeah, yeah, the people just didn't see him, so they didn't like him. Yeah, um, that's a shame. Well, it's not because he's a murderous, crazy person. But... Yeah. He didn't achieve any kind of lasting legacy at all, either. There's nothing we really look back and go, ah, oh, that's Tiberian, that is. No. No, that's the first five Roman emperors are pretty much household names, but Tiberius is definitely the least well known. Yeah, because he's one that you've heard of, but don't yeah. really know much about. I mean, you're was... you're going to recognise the next few names a lot more. Yeah, you, you've warned me of that. So, uh, I'm three. Because yeah, I, I think his last, his, his last, you're going I was going to go two. I was going to go for two. Can I match you with that? Can I put two as well? Are you going to go for two? I think, yeah, because the last impression, there isn't really much. Other than he wasn't very mad. successful, was he? No. I mean, you could argue he did what Augustus wanted him to do, but mm-hmm. what Augustus wanted him to do was nothing. And he yeah. managed to do nothing. So for doing that, I'm going to give him two. Right, let's work this out, listeners. Uh, so we've got two. So we've got two, two, and two. Um, that is. Image of Right, here we go then. Are you ready Ooh. to see the man himself? I can't wait to see his busts. Again, we have two images, um, both of roughly the same age, one slightly younger than the other. We'll put these images up on the website. Here we go. Here's the big reveal. Ooh. He, do you know what? He looks surprisingly modern. He, he looks the kind of face. If you saw, obviously not that walking out streets, that would be terrifying. Yeah, so something about the glassy eyes. Yeah, the, the, and the, the cold dead stare. And the fact it's a floating head. Yeah. Um, I think the fact that he, he looks normal. Yeah, you he, just... He, he, you can see, it's like a normal person. He does, and you build these people up to be yeah. crazy people. I mean, he, he looks, but... the top of his head seems quite large. He's got kind of a short hair, yeah. kind of quite high up. Quite a pointy nose. I was going to say quite a long, a Roman nose. A Roman nose, it is a Roman nose. Uh, but I'm a bit concerned he has no body. Yeah, quite a lot of Roman emperors didn't. That's weird. Some of them don't even have heads, they're just really? flat impressions on wow. hands. So, yeah, he's, he's just... I, I'm, I'm not thinking... Oh, sorry, let me read out a couple of quotes. Okay. So they're yeah, described. Yeah. So, Suetonius. Tiberius was of fair complexion and wore his hair rather long at the back, so much to cover the nape of his neck. <gasps> mullet! Yes, it's a mullet. He had a mullet! He had a mullet. Okay, that's an extra point there. Which is just amazing. 
the, the mullet's not in the statues. No. You get the feeling that whoever was doing the statue just went, no, I'm not doing the mullet. I, I get the feeling like they, it was historically perfect, pristine, until maybe 1992, when mullets were starting to go out of fashion, so I like to take it off. Yeah, you think it's a modern day thing that yeah, chipped off like, the mullet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <it laughs> Eradicate really all the evidence of the mullet. Yeah, he's so although we've got no images of him with that mullet, mm. we do have a description. Yeah. So um according to Tastus, without trace of hair and an ulcerous face. Now this is later on in life when his mullet falls out. <laughs> um, and his skin starts to go bad. Remember, I said he yeah. maybe went away. He was getting a bit worried about his complexion. So, but I mean, he's in his seventies by that point. Oh yeah. I don't know. I, there's nothing about his image that it impresses me. Out. He looks. He looks like somebody that looks at data all day, doesn't he? He does. He just looks like if you sat down at a dinner party and you ended up sitting next to him. Oh, you'd feel it all. You'd just. You'd sigh inwardly, wouldn't you? Yeah. Like, I'm just not. <sighs> uh, and you'd look over and look at Germanicus and go... I wish I was on that side yeah. of the table. That looks so much Oh, fun. they've got a party cannon. Oh. oh, yeah. So, again, for the listeners, we both rate this out of ten, mm. but then we divide the total score by four to make the total five, uh, just because ranking it out of five originally just seems silly. It's too big for, for yeah. a Yeah, so out of ten, I'm going to give him... I'm only going to give him two... And that is solely for the mullet. I'm, again, I have to agree with you. There's, yeah, there's nothing that stands out. It's not striking. It's not even memorable. No, it's not. He's a bit boring he is. as an emperor. I've got to ask. So four divided by four is one. Yes, oh, that's easy. We didn't even break the calculator out for yeah. that one. Right, so okay. That. So that is one for Imago Facio. Mm. Temple completed. So in how long he lasted. Yeah, so this round is how long he lasted. Um, how long do you think he reigned, based on everything we've said so far? Okay, he became emperor at 55. Oh, you remember the note and dates. And he died when he was seven, so he was over 20 years. Yes, almost 23 20, years. 23 he years. So it's a good, wow. good long reign that he kept things ticking over. Um, he reigned from 14 CE to 37 CE. So if we put that through our process where 40 years is 100%, and 100% yeah. is the score of 5, that equates to a score of 2.88. So, cause I guess every 10 years would be, yeah. yeah. 2.88. 2.88, which That's is not bad. not bad. That is a reasonable score. Just under half of, well, just over half of uh, Augustus. Okay, so then, final round. Do they have a certain je ne sais No. No? I'm not feeling him at all. Are you not? No. Well, what I thought, I, I expected to go into this and find that he was an evil, horrible man. And I must admit, I grew to like him a bit throughout my week of research. I, I think mm. I became a little bit biased. I got to the point where I was thinking, ah, he probably didn't order all those murders. And all that stuff at the end of his life was just gossip. Yeah. And he didn't really want to do it, but he stepped up to the plate. Mm. But whilst talking to you today, my opinion of him's hardened slightly. But either way, I still am not feeling that he's got that certain sort. I don't think he has. I, I just, I don't, I'm not feeling it at all. I think he did some good stuff. He did some not, not quite good, good stuff. stuff and possibly some awful stuff. Stuff that still yeah. chills me. Yeah, but... Um, I don't think, I'm sorry, I don't think he does. No, so that's both of us saying no. No. He does not make it into the Colosseum. So thing. instead of going to the Colosseum, he's, he's going to the Lions. Yeah, let's feed him to the Lions. Off oh. you go, Tiberius. Right, the last thing I need to say, because mm. I forgot to mention it earlier. Do you remember little Gaius? Yeah. <gasps> little Gaius was there at the end, wasn't he? Yeah, he was with Tiberius on... Yeah. on um, little, little Gaius was Germanicus's son, if you remember. And everyone oh. was thinking, well, here we go, we've got the son. He's going to be just as good as Germanicus, or good, just <laughs> as good as his grandfather, Drusus. Yeah. Now, little Gaius had a nickname. And because when he was really small, they used to dress little Gaius up in um, a little army uniform yeah. and he'd go around with his father's troops and they yeah. all loved him. He was like the, the army mascot. So they all paraded him around. He was loved by the troops. So it's all looking good, isn't it? Hmm. And they got him these little tiny sandals, these little boots that he'd wear. So he was called Little Boot or Bootykins. Oh. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Do you want sweet. to know what Bootykins is in Latin? What? Caligula. <gasps> I've heard of him. 
Gaius. Caligula. He is Caligula. The big reveal at the end. Little Gaius is our next emperor, <gasps> Caligula. So that is who we will be doing next week. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, okay, as always, thank you very much for listening. Yeah, thank you. Um, we are not up on iTunes yet. We should no. be. We, we got an email saying that we are, but we can't access it. So we're no, going to try and not. sort that out. But once we do, please leave a review on iTunes. It will help yeah. bump our ratings. And thank you to the 50 people who've downloaded the podcast so far. It was really nice of you on Podbean. Um, we're under Roman Emperor's Totalis Rankium. We're also on Facebook. So please, you know, um, like it and follow us. We'll put pictures up of us. Um, and images that we've used as well. Yeah, yeah, we'll put lots of stuff up on our WordPress site as well. Oh, yeah, uh, Tell us um, Rankium, Roman Emperors. Yeah. And also, um, very soon, we're going to start putting up our podcast on YouTube as well. Excellent. Good stuff. Just a further way of spreading the Emperor love. Okay, as always, thank you very much to the Rex Factor for uh, letting us use their format. Yes. Okay, then, right, until next time, goodbye. Bye. child have no friends? Do they struggle to keep up with conversations? Do they need a confidence at their level? The new Rock on a Leash. It's everything a regular pet does, just more statically. No feeding, no watering, no toileting, no love. Even the simplest child will be challenged in caring for this pet that comes in a variety of species, including igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Also, if your pet becomes too challenging for your child, you can use it to administer fatal beatings. Warning, Rock on a Leash does